Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. It's a beautiful day in the uh-huh. neighborhood, man. Pleasure to have this man back in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Joseph Sakura in the neighborhood, man. Good to be here. Welcome back to the neighborhood. Good to be here, Big Boy. What's going on with Ghost? Ghost uh, got shot yeah. and, and fell off a balcony very dramatically and very handsomely, as Omari Harbuck likes to do. <laughs> yeah, he, he, uh, hey, whoa, look, look at hey. me. I'm falling. Hey. I'm but I'm falling cool. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, yeah. Who did it? Um, well, it was either me or you. Mm-hmm. Or oh, Cooper so you did Sacks. it? No, no, no. Oh, you no, did I it? Because I know I, I didn't no, do it. No. Because Hollywood doesn't hire me. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> the era of big boy is over. I don't, oh, my I don't gosh, man. <laughs> Once I, you know, I used to do movies back in the days. Oh, I and know. you know I was over 500 pounds, right? Once I lost the weight, man, type, you know, they <laughs> shunned me. They just want the, they just want the radio show. No security anymore. No yeah, one. yeah, oh, man. Yeah. You know, all my roles said fat black guy. <laughs> You know, wow. most what? of my roles say that too. But Fat it's black just, guy, yeah, man, I do my best. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> but that, that, I remember your Atta first boy. work when you were in uh, the Clumps when you played mm. Fat uh, Black Guy uh, number uh, one uh, in that. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, dude, but, but no, for real, what happened? Who did it? Uh, well, because I'm in this I, interview right now. Freak. I will tell you that Courtney Kemp has said that it is one of the people that they showed, the one of the uh, suspects that mm. they showed. The so. So it's it's going down. So we know that two people have already been cleared. Not mm-hmm. Dre, not Paz. Not Dre, not Paz. So you got you. you. Got, I think you, you got did four it. Tommy? options. You got four options. But instead of you know, and wow. I'm not going to say it. You know what I'm saying? Who did it? Because mm. I got kids to raise. <laughs> oh, but you it's obvious you don't care about my kids. <laughs> they, they you don't care about oh, you don't care about, you don't about daddy care time. About my kids. Man. Take us back to the moment when you found out when you were reading the script. Who it was going to be. Without like, in, yeah. us knowing. Like you reenact know, what your face looked like. When you- I was like this. I was like, wow, that person in that way. Why mm-hmm. would I? I mean, why would they do yeah. that? See, why yeah. Would, mm-hmm. would happen? You're too good of an actor. That's a curveball. Right? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why would I? Why would they? Did they make you guys sign like one of them? If you tell anything, it'd be $5 million kind of thing? No. Oh, they didn't. Then tell us. That's, the, that's the honest truth. They did well, you not know what, then? Yeah. I dare okay. you to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh? Did you never play dares when you were a kid? It's I, funny. Dare you. I don't know why they would have uh, Vincent Ragney, played by Joe Perino, mm-hmm. do, do the crime, but they did lead up to that because Joe was, or uh, Vincent was on the phone with Ghost previously and asked mm-hmm. for that favor. So. Dude, this is very okay, interesting. Guy. We need so, a diagram. So the mob is in. <laughs> mob is in on this. Right, right, right. The mo- and the mob will come into play shortly. Okay. Ooh. Is this truly, really the last season? Because this is I don't truly, really is. the last season. If Courtney A. Kemp, our show's creator and fearless leader, says it is, then it is. It is the last season. However, Fifty Cent created a hashtag that says "Power Never Dies." Mm. So. Mm. Hey, he's good power. on his hashtags. He's, he's good on his hashtags. He's very good yeah. on his. Does Fifty ever show up to the set? I mean, uh, I, I yeah. post, you know, like yeah, he, when he's not working. He does. He okay. does. Fifty's been 50. very sub. Fifty. You know who made up Fifty? What? Who? Who? Sharon Osbourne. Oh, yeah. Really? Fifty. Yeah. Hello. She did? Is yeah. she? Yeah. Is she on the show too? Is Sharon she gonna be? Is, did she kill? Did she kill? Or, or did she <laughs> shoot ghosts? Hold on a second. A U S A Sharon Osbourne. Yeah. Did she? Did she? Uh, did she hurt ghosts? Is she gonna pop in like you she motherfucker? Just, I told she, you exactly. She was just like I just you just broke my heart. <laughs> I had to do my it. Heart Man, all righty. So it's obvious you're not going to tell us anything. I can't tell you okay. that. Yeah. All right. Because hmm. well, well, I'm scared of Fifty no, Cent. Yeah, Let I mean, me ask you this: With Fifty Cent, if Fifty wasn't like Fifty and the, like the creator or whatever it is with with you know power and uh, and stars and would he have been on that show just from auditioning? Yeah, I think it's okay. 50's best work. Okay, what do you think? No, nah. no, you nah. weren't into the Canaan. Character? Oh no, no, I thought he was all bad. And yeah. actually, he made you know, me laugh and you know what? Let me tell you where that's coming from because I auditioned twice and Fifty uh. knew, and I didn't get the part. <laughs> so this is this is me plainly hating. You know what I'm saying? Uh. This is me plainly hating. But you know, when we were sitting down. You would have been a great and, uh, not, Well, not for that part. You know well, what I'm what saying? Part? I just wanted to play black guy walking on subway. That's it. Uh, you know wow. what I'm saying? I was like, damn, Phil. The I problem like, was, was you auditioned for Fat Black Guy, and they're like, he's not fat. Oh, mm. see, That's I'm true, still, you That's know what I'm saying? I'm still exactly. in those You're daily in breakdowns. You got to break the mold. I got to, man. I got to. Well, you know, hashtag uh, power never dies. No telling. I'll probably pop up in the next one. That's right. You know? You got other options. I mean, Courtney has said there's going to be uh, other spinoffs, so there's going to be a power world coming up. So it looks like you got plenty of opportunities. But you were saying that you still audition. 
I did. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That you and you say you auditioned like how many times since the since Power's been on the TV I show? I have done. I think the exact number is twenty eight auditions since <laughs> Power has Power since Power has been over in June. Wow. Wait, you talking about since it's been over for the season in the June? Rap, the rap in June. 28. Yeah. I'm thinking since auditions. Power wow. been on and you just kind of tapping in. 28. Auditions and how many auditions? Shoot. How many out jobs? Out of the 28, how many jobs? One. Why do you think that is? Damn. I'm not sure. Hmm. Is that how business. the industry is? Yeah. Do you, you go, it's a numbers game a lot of the times. It's how it's been my whole career. I mean, I've, I've, it, it's been a really always difficult for me to get work. I mean, every job is a blessing. Um, I always have the options of going back to the theater where I started from, mm -hmm. so I'm always I'm happy to be part of the uh, the theater community in New York. So um, I can always go back there, and uh, I just love telling stories. So that's that's where I'm at. You've done a lot of Damn. work. I've yeah. done a lot of work. I've been in the business a long, long time though. Too. That's a lot of tuition into the school of experience. Too. <laughs> know. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll like, and, and, and that's that that work. Do, not that does with power did it pay off, but you're always kind of working towards something. Do you get kind of used, Joseph, to like a no and it doesn't feel a certain way? It 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 depends. It depends on how much you want the job. But there like there's certain jobs that you really really want and mm -hmm. and, you, and you don't get and. Those sometimes hurt more. Those no's hurt more because you're just, oh, man, I really, I wish I could have gotten this one. But you do get used to the no's quite a bit. But during power, I mean, I did a significant amount of, of stuff like, you know, The Intruder and Jacob's mm -hmm. Ladder and, and a recurring on um, Underground um, uh, that Anthony Hemingway directed. I love that show on WG in America. Um uh, and other stuff too. I mean, I, I popped in here. I was on uh, uh, Chicago, uh, Chicago PD. Mm -hmm. um, I was popping around doing guest spots that were when people are like, "Are you thinking that you're gonna get you know stereotype?" Probably a little bit, but I've always kind of played gangsters, right. and cops, and firemen, and kind of blue collar people. So are, that's all right with me. Are you afraid of if if the power world stuff doesn't come? Are you afraid of that grind again? Uh, the grind is not the, the worst part of the grind to me that you can probably relate to too. At least, you know, it from being here is that that pilot season, mm. because right? Right. Nothing right. is taken into consideration. It's never you. I always feel terrible then because they're like, you got six auditions and they're seven page sides for this and that. And then they're going to add this and change this. And you feel like just a commodity rather than a part right. of a part of the machine. So I think what I'm going to do is utilize my position that I've worked so hard in so many years to get to, and I'm going to write more of my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to produce create more it, of huh? my own stuff and, and create the content that I like to watch. Has I there been that. a role where you didn't get, and then you mm -hmm. look back and you see either who got it and it, and it wasn't good? Oh, yeah. I, I have, I have, I've had the opposite of that happen, oh. especially in theater mm. in Chicago, where I'd be like, I was perfect for that. I should have been me, but it was Michael Shannon. And you're like, no, nah, um, Michael Shannon was yeah. a better choice. He, he killed that. <laughs> yeah, I would have gave it to him. He's an actor. He's oh, yeah, I guess, you know. He just you know what, I'm saying? Yeah. what do you do to tap into a character like Tommy and some, and a character that you had to play for so many years? Mm -hmm. Then how do you tap out afterwards? Um, well, I think that I've, I've done, um, a, hopefully a good job. Extremely with the other roles, job. with the other roles that I played while I was playing Tommy, um, I think that as an actor, that's what you that's what you do is you you go you go all all into all of the different characters and like Big Boy said that I've had the the, <laughs> the um, hustle luxury of mm. of uh, so many years at at this business and this craft that um, it's not the most difficult thing in the world for me to sit down create try to see the world through this other character's eyes, show up on set and make the most interesting choices that I possibly can. Um, as far as getting into the character of Tommy, I based Tommy a, a lot on guys that I was scared of growing mm. up. Mm. Um, and also I have no problem with saying that I, you know, I still go to therapy, but I initially started going to therapy for anger management therapy. Wow. And, um, I think that I learned so much of where my anger came from and why I was blown up mm. and why I was like, you know, there's a certain point in in a person's life, spe specifically a man's life, that if you're still getting like, and searching out like fist fights and physical altercation, you know, well into your 30s and into your 40s, and like all you're like, <laughs> there, there's a problem. Yes, that's that, that is that that was a that's those are a, those are tools for a different time in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, were you doing that like I fist think, fighting a lot? Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, growing up because I was an amateur boxer for so many years oh, that I, I had. Um, Let's not mess with this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, had, <laughs> I had that was much more calming time because you didn't want to hurt your hands. You knew you had a confidence of like, I'm going to take this. Yeah. And there was just this frustration. And a lot of it came from just being unhappy 
in life. Mm-hmm. And then it was my uh, girlfriend and now wife Aww. who said, you know, um, this whole thing, like you're like, I, I got into one problem when she was around. Then I got into another one and she's like, this is not, I'm not in this relationship. Right. I'm not going to be not with going this, this kind of person. And I was basically begging her like, no, no, you're, I, this is going to, this is a good thing. She's like, all right, if you go to therapy, I'll stay with you. And how long ago was that? That was uh, seven years ago, eight years ago. Right. And you see, we see more people now, Joseph, talking even more so about therapy. therapy. Like eight or nine years ago, it was still like, I don't need therapy. I I don't, you know, you know, especially for men. Yeah. So how do you say, you know what? Okay, I'll try it. Well, because it worked for me right. at first, it was just like, you know, I'm, you know, no, no, that's not me. Or like, you know, yeah, but like this is this person. And I was blaming a right. lot of stuff on other people rather than taking responsibility for myself and my life. And also proved that somebody cared enough about me to offer this way out. And it worked. And then I, I found when I found my wife, it was, I finally, for the first time in my life, found something that I loved more than acting. Mm-hmm. And then all of these jobs came. And then oh. it just was so much easier. I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody, but that's what happened She's for me. She's a blessing. That's yeah, she beautiful. was a blessing. That's She's great. a blessing. She's what a was person. the most surprising thing that you learned about yourself through therapy? That my ther- that my anger was fear based. Mm. I was tired, of, and I, that's when I started boxing. I was tired of getting beat up. Um, I was mm-hmm. uh, I was tired of like going, you know, just getting beat up by so, in so many different other situations. Um, I, I fought, so people gave me credit. They're like, he got his ass kicked, yeah, but he yeah. stayed. Yeah, hell yeah. But, um, he didn't run. He didn't run. Uh, <laughs> you, I, I was knocked yeah, out. How do I run? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but I, and I never got knocked out. Right, I got okay. this this Polish head of bricks. So uh, I love his luckily enough right. not to get knocked out. But I was, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. When but, did the love for, for acting and theater come in? Uh, early on. Before I, the boxing? Mm-hmm. Oh, I started wow. boxing late. Oh, okay. Really pretty, quite late, actually. I was 17, which is really, as mm-hmm. anybody box knows, that's a, it's pr- pretty late to start. But um, I started acting when I was 11 years old. And I asked my mom when I was 10, I said, Ma, I want to act. And she said, all right, honey, come back to me in um, a month. If you still want to act, then we'll see what we can do. She was like, came yeah, because we got all these swords and soccer balls and <laughs> all this other stuff that you want to do. <laughs> what about the tennis racket in here, Joseph? Huh? You signed up for baseball. <laughs> yeah. So you come so back. So I came back and she looked up acting in the yellow pages. And there's not really anything there. And then she looked up theater. So... From the theater, I auditioned for A Christmas Carol Downtown. I didn't oh, get hey. that. Oh. And Damn. then I got, uh, they said, oh, there, but there's this play in a, a far suburb of Chicago called uh, Lake Forest. And so I went there and I got this play called The Little Prince. And oh, from, that book. was The Little Prince. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's in a beautiful play, <laughs> too. And so I got that. And then um, I did some commercials, which my parents saved the money and it helped pay for my college. Wow. And it also, I was in the Screen Actors Guild by 1988. Wow. Um, so, and my mom kept paying the dues even just from the commercial money and handling that for me. So, um, it took some of the pressure of paying for college off. And um, it was just really a, a blessing because I thought I was always going to be a policeman or a fireman because that was kind of where my neighborhood was policemen, firemen, city workers, and kind of like low level gangsters. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so none of that worked out really. And I, and I really tried to do everything other than acting mm. um, because. It was too hard and I hated everybody, you know, telling me, oh, your nose is too big. Oh, your eyes are like this. Oh, you're you're yeah. this. You're that. And you're especially this, you're that. when you're wow. younger, huh? It's very hard to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. So that? I've always had complexes. You did a commercial with Michael Jordan? Yeah. McDonald's Michael Jeffrey commercial? Jordan. Yep. Mm-hmm. The what? Michael Jordan? It is Michael Jordan. I heard that. Yes. Wow. Yes. I remember. See it on YouTube. <laughs> right. Look that up. You know, I think <laughs> I saw, I think a man. That's not Michael Jordan. No, is that Michael Jordan? And then, I, then he then he comes up, and then my face goes like this. I'll go do it right for the camera. <laughs> it is Michael Jordan. Then they're That's like, great. "Cut, That's check the gate." <laughs> the gate. <laughs> Good job, great job. That's a wrap. Good, Good work there. Good. That's so Good. Good, shot. Good work there. Is that your real last name? S i k o r a. Yeah, yeah Sakura. Also, in the per- Polish pronunciation, which I tried to get down with a little bit of Shikora, my grandmother would always say Shikora because it means Shikora. It's, it's 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 nice. It's cute. It's a yeah. it's a nice name. But my dad would always be like, "You're an American. Why are you pronouncing it? Like, what are you what are you doing? With you? Right, right. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Just say it like how they're gonna <laughs> say it when you win the Exactly. What you, exactly. <laughs> how how caught up in Hollywood are you? Do you do you watch like the Golden Globes and are you? Tripping off of, you know, Oscar who's being... Yeah, I don't watch award shows at all. I but I did that. watch all of Ricky Gervais's jokes, yeah. which I thought were hilarious. Uh. Yeah, man. <laughs> and you, he, his jokes almost felt like 
I don't care if y'all don't want me back here ever yep. again. You know what I'm saying? He didn't seem like he was handcuffed. True and real and raw. And, and yeah. I, I was so happy I watched him because Ricky Gervais is hilarious. I think he's one of the funniest people alive. What do you think about just all the the sensitivities and things that go on in not, not just in the business? I think, and- it's, self, I think it's self-importance. Mm. I think people need to let it go. I think that people think, oh, I'm so... I'm I'm this person, and and they have such a, um, uh, a, 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 an engorged ego that they can they can sh- let a little, little of that air out, and I think that's what Ricky Gervais was trying to do. With you being mm-hmm. with Power the TV show being so popular, Tommy the character being so popular, do you get recognized everywhere you go now, or can you kind of blend in? My wife and I were in in Bruges in Belgium, walking down the street, and a guy runs out, and he's like. I uh they they here for uh the uh, I own the restaurant I own and I'm like congratulations that's <laughs> right, yeah, amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like and he's just like uh, uh couldn't say anything he just goes Tommy you was like man you knew where you were eating dinner at yeah. you was like huh it sounds like a free meal in here it sounds like a free meal I'm no dummy yeah. so it was a surprise so yeah it's it's amazing the reach of the show and uh-huh. then I, I always say that it's it's amazing that it has affected not only the culture but culture yeah, in man. general and uh, american culture and world culture it's played in 179 different countries Whoa. this show um it's the highest uh watched show on premium cable right so now addicting. it's 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 a great show and, <laughs> and i'm really you know proud to be part of it. that power of the tv show when you first either auditioned or cracked open a script when you got the part did you know that it was going to be a phenomenon I loved the pilot. I loved mm. the content of it. I actually had to pass on the first round of auditions for it because I was getting married. Oh. Um, and uh, they didn't actually have Omari Hardwick cast. They had another actor cast as Tommy at the time, I believe. And the character's name was Eddie O'Neill. And then when they secured Omari, who was offered the role of Ghost, um, they went back to auditions to see to make sure they had the right kind of counterpart mm. for Ghost. And so I auditioned for Tommy five times. Wow. Damn, how do you walk yeah. in and nail that? How do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how mm-hmm. do you know what they're looking for? Like, well, I've been in New York for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I get that. I guess um, I was lucky enough to grow up with a bit of a street education. Um, I know those, I've, I've been in the room with those guys. Because it seemed like no one else could do Tommy. No, no one. But you. Oh, thank you. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it's not because it is you. It just, I couldn't see anyone else doing this. Like, because when I, when we first sat down with you, when you walked in, mm-hmm. I didn't see Tommy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's the, mm-hmm. there's this thing where it's like, oh, okay, damn. That's fucking Tommy right there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a total different. And I couldn't see anybody else doing that. I appreciate it. I just put everything that I could. Actually, you know, this is a good story. So when, after I got everybody else was like, congratulations, you've been doing this for a million years. Thank God you finally booked something cool mm-hmm. that's already picked up for the first season. Everybody but one guy. And my one friend who is a very, very accomplished uh, actor said, all right, look, congratulations. But. Now the work begins because if you're not the same guy Mm. on the first take of the first setup of the first scene of the first episode of the first season, it doesn't matter if this goes one episode, one season or 10 seasons. If you change who you are at the core, the audience is going to turn on you and they're not even going to know why. Mm. So he goes, you have to be a fully actualized person. Every aspect of this man's psyche Everything you want to bring to this character, who this person is, you have to show up with all of that and then let the writers write for you. Mm. Did you did you understand what mm. he was telling you at the time? I did. Yeah. Because if I didn't, I said, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Can you explain that? Yeah. 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 Because now I'm scared. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you've been there. You, you, you've done this. So, so I pressure. really so I really did try to bring every aspect of Tommy there. So when people say to me, oh, the evolution of Tommy really changed here and changed there. I always mm. say, uh, Tommy didn't change. No, he if hasn't. You, Tommy's the same Tommy, but the situations that Tommy mm-hmm. are in or the people that Tommy has to interact with have changed. And that says that the writers appreciate what the actor is doing. And then there's a symbiosis that happens. Do you ever watch uh, watch your work? Yeah, so I can get better. Really? Yeah, I mean, I know- Are you critical I, on your work? Very. Right. I mean, I know that's that there's certain actors, like you always hear of Johnny Depp never walks watches his stuff or other people don't. That's great, man. I'm not at Johnny Depp's level. Right, I can't right, afford right. that. And also, I have a different mentality for whatever reason, is that uh, 
I'm I'm a worker, you know, like mm-hmm. I was raised to be a worker. Like my, my dad stopped telling me at 35, like the fireman's test. Now you got to do another thing. Now you got to do the EMT <laughs> yeah. to transfer into the fire department if you're going to go. And so I, I always had this bit of a mentality. So the luxury for me is doing all of that work. So when I show up on set, I can just relax mm-hmm. and let go. And that's what I love. So I can make these choices and just live in this other person's skin. And it's not just because you're in here. Honestly, Tommy is one of my favorite characters because you play him so well. You do that character. You give that one character so much justice. One of your so favorite characters justice. on Power? No, it, he, he There's really is. There's not all that many characters. No, yeah, 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 yeah. no but, but no. But it's and you, not because you're in here. No, no <laughs> it really isn't though. But you really stand out. Like it just, you become to love and hate him at the same time. It's like, because he's crazy. He's mm-hmm. just out there. He doesn't care. But at the same time, he does. Like, especially when it's like the people he loves. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and it's just so interesting. What do you love in hate the most about that character i love tommy's loyalty i love mm-hmm. his swag i love his self-confidence i love his unquestioning uh-ness of the people that he loves to a fault i i love i the thing that frustrated me most up until this season was that tommy never was truly his own man or mm. saw his accomplishments and how much he was doing i think he was blinded by his love for ghost mm. Um, I think, you know, Courtney Kemp has always said that this show is a tragic love story. But what a lot of people don't really get is that it's a tragic love story between two guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These two brothers, mm. um, Tommy and Ghost. And I think that Tommy has had a, a huge um, evolution in his own understanding of who he is. And I, I appreciate that about Tommy. I think that I one of the things I don't necessarily love about Tommy in a real way is that Tommy is so incredibly violent. But, he is very. But that his, he always his girl ruthless. need to tell him go to therapy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, go to but therapy. But he needs that to survive. I'm not here for this. Um, he, needs gonna, that to, not... he needs that to survive in this world surrounded by death. When people leave me comments all the time uh, on social media, you're gonna die, Tommy. You're gonna die. And are you, you ready to die next week? And I'm like, Tommy's <laughs> always ready to die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's been about that life. Bring he wants it. the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what happens, that's what happens. Have he you had care. anyone that don't know how to separate? Mm. most you, people I'd say more and, than half in people. public where it's been yeah. like man like, and not that they want to do something to you but no, most people just want to be down with Tommy like Tommy right. look at yeah. this man or like they, one of the things that I have said which I I don't say this as much anymore it was, I think it was like season three and I'm walking through the nice not bad projects just the the, the Taylor White homes in uh, Brooklyn mm. and someone's like yo what's up Tommy I'm like what's up man and he's like uh I'm the, I'm Tommy in real life. I'm like that's why you're hugging the block right now. Have right. you watched the show? Oh, <laughs> right, right. And uh, his boys are like, oh, oh. I think I got him good enough to just to walk down the block. I was like, oh, maybe I should just, just maybe relax. Do people bit. call you at most times in public? Do you hear Joseph or do you hear Tommy? I I'd say probably ninety-seven and a half percent Tommy, and uh, a couple of times a, a couple of times. A week would be Joseph. Mostly people from Europe. Re- oh, uh-huh. Joseph. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, you? Yeah. Oh, you Joseph Sikura. Hey. <laughs> Can we get a picture? If you hear a Joseph, do you turn around? Uh, because do I, you think I turn around most okay. times for Tommy? I come. I turn around ninety nine point nine percent of the time because I would like to be. I would like to. I treat people how I would like to be treated. Right. And if I saw somebody, oh, that'd be great. I when people feel like I owe them or they own me. Right, uh, and it's like uh, I I can do it. They're like I, I'm, I'm not gonna follow you on Twitter anymore. I'm like, oh boy, poor me. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, no. now how am I going to eat? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I it's all to, over now. I try to do that, but it's always like I I I'll take the picture and then somebody be like, take the picture. Oh, can you leave this? My my brother's you know overseas serving for the country. I'm like, yes, I'll do that. Oh, can you also do my Snapchat and then can you leave mm. this other thing? And I'm just like, guys. can you cash at me forty eight dollars? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did How I tell you about you my gallbladder? You, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's your blood uh, yeah. type? <laughs> What's your blood type? Or have you always been a fan of other people work? You know, there's people that really enjoy what you do. Yeah. Have you been a fan and went up to somebody else because of you you were a fan of their work? It's very rare that I can't help myself because I get so nervous and I do get starstruck. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've I've gone up to other people and said stuff. But there's also times where I have I they have, been as nice as you have? Dennis France was, and then I got to do NYPD Blue, the okay, finale see how it part works. of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you um, like, hey, you were an asshole when I met you. <laughs> sometimes people are. I think I think most time people don't know what to do. Like 
there's people who are just exceptionally incredible who I think are some of the best actors in America who are also the loveliest people, people like Edie Falco. Mm. Um, uh, but then there's also people who are, yeah, there's, there have, yes, there have been people Aww. that I, I have admired their work and said, just seen them walking down and literally like there's, you know, there's a big L, uh, uh, verse where he says, you know, that clown, uh, can I swear on this? Right. He what says that you, clown ass shit. Don't want to be around that shit. You want to say what's up? Give me a pound. That's it. That's it. And if, um, I just wanted to say what's up to this guy walking down fifth Ave and I was just like, yo, yo, I just want to say, and he's like, yeah, I, yeah. I was just like, wow. Okay. Yep. I'm fucking Tommy from Power. You don't know that. <laughs> you know what? I am? So this is this is Tommy yeah, from Power. Yeah. You were working. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is three years ago. Man, oh who was gosh. it? Mark Hamill. I'll uh, tell you off the air. Uh, no. Yes, don't, you know what? Don't even say it. Write it down. I'll say it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Louis had one of those moments with somebody oh, yeah, too. Man, man. Was was a, like, we bring TJ it up all Miller. the time. Oh yeah, man! I asked for a picture, and he was like, "No, nah, sorry, not doing pictures." And I was like, "Ah, it's fucking funny." That's no, all right. His best like movie that. was the Emoji Movie. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right, and Uh-oh. that was it. Oh, <laughs> ding ding ding! Shout out! Thank you, bro. Thanks for the backup. Yeah. No, that, that's that's backup. Actually, I think that dude's super talented, but at the same time, it it sucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it's just I was it's, so bummed it's, out. It's not, it was, it's not hard to be cool. It was when Silicon even... Valley barely started season one, and I was like, "Who is this guy? He's funny. I love this character. Like, yo, it's dope." And then. I was the only one who actually yeah. went up to him for a picture. I'm pretty sure at that and event. And it wasn't and even like at, in the bathroom or at a bad nah. opportunity. It was like a moment where. It was where... like a public event where a and lot of people And then Louis was invited. like, I'm Louis from Big Boy's Neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? And he was like, who are you? <laughs> ring the bell. I'm out. Peace. Yeah. Ring the bell. Yeah. Oh, you ring the bell. You ring the bell. <laughs> That's what, yeah, that was crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just appreciate when people are cool and it doesn't take much. I don't expect, I don't expect people to, like when I give give love like that it's it's mm-hmm. it's so rare that it feels i i try to always remind myself that when people come up to me and they do that that's that's what they're doing but there are times when my wife is just like hey look we're on a date i, I don't want any pictures and i'm yeah. like can you tell the people that right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you tell them you like ask her yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do this literally like just i'll they will not be like oh tommy can we get a picture i'll just go and then like everybody's eyes just go towards my yeah. way and she's just, just like I'm sorry we're on a date <laughs> oh that. I'm sorry I'll just be like and then if she ever goes to the bathroom or something I'll be like come here hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up so what will you do if this is if Power the TV show is done you know how you get used to a routine yeah of you know seeing Damn. people on set and you know your tri- whatever it may be yeah, yeah. that and and, and when i looked i was like man since 2013 Been that's that is a part of <laughs> yeah. your life and that's family now yeah and have you ever you ha- you haven't been on a show as long no, no oh man nothing like that nothing nowhere near just one season of stuff no two seasons of and something even else, that's but. emotional yeah. you yeah. know oh, what i'm yeah. saying absolutely like so are, are you geared up for that I was built for this business. I heard that. And I, I, I show up on time. I'm ready. For, I want Two of the things that make me the, m- so incensed that I have a hard time coming. I have to go to my anger ma- management therapy, literally go through some of my steps when people are late. <laughs> I like that you're writing it down, Ooh. writing it down. Like, All right. Don't be late. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, when people are late and then when people complain incessantly, I get a couple of complaints if, if, the, if you're having 15, 16, 17 hour days every day and by the end of that. But 99% of the time, I'm like, are you kidding? You know how, right. how many years I worked yeah, man. to work 17 yeah. hours a day at it's what I love to do? It's crazy when people think that it's a problem. When you're like, dude, I know what a problem is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this isn't a problem. This is not a problem. Or as my dad would say, the worst would be, it's a champagne problem. Mm. Right? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. Did Denzel Washington tell you that too? The, no, no. Oh, okay, he told me he that. He told you yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like champagne problems. I was yeah. like, well, we got two different kind of champagnes. Yeah. <laughs> Denzel, you know what I'm saying? What about with a TV show like Power? Mm-hmm. The attachment when people die, when people get killed off the show, it's like it's also interesting to see how the people take it. Do y'all do <gasps> table reads or did y'all get the yes, script? Yes, we do oh. table reads. What and are change, table reads? That's when, as a cast, it would be look just like this. Yeah, but we would all have a script, and there'd be one somebody reading all the stage directions, and then you would read your part yeah. as the part. Oh. So we're up. literally like. And then Louis walks in and mm-hmm. he gets shot, like, you know, <laughs> and you're like, gotcha. wait, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Table read. So did a lot of people find out their demise in the table read? Well, Courtney would take them oh, okay. a couple of days, at least a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe as, as, long, as far back as she could muster up to let them know. 
that their character was gonna meet their demise to give them some some time and some right. some. So some you just planning. not like on page thirty eight. <laughs> you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't like. What, yeah, what? <laughs> okay, so Damn. you do get a chance. Yeah, you get a little. When nice. you get your script, mm -hmm. so being that you know you didn't get the pre the pre talk, so you're always fine. But do you get your script and do you get not nervous? But do you? I can't say you, I didn't get the pre talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we still have episodes to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, checking the nair nair. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> dies. <laughs> huh? yep. No, no, you didn't die because you're talking about Power World. Uh, but I'm not <laughs> saying I'm part of that world. I mean, look at how I look. Mm. As, <laughs> oh, my as gosh. A viewer, as a viewer, it's crazy how much like you get attached to the show and the characters. Because I always wanted, early on, I wanted Angela to die. She got on my nerves. Dude, she okay? would say it, All man. the times. But when it actually came down to it, it was the weirdest feeling. I actually felt bad. I was like, no. Call me now. Call me now. Pretty girl syndrome. I hate that. She's gone. She's gone. I like she, her. She wasn't that bad. She <laughs> deserved it, but I actually ended up feeling bad for her. I don't know why. And I didn't expect that because I wanted her to die. Yeah, and then when would, it came out, I was like, say it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and, and, I feel bad for her after. I like, don't oh, no. yeah, like, oh. Maybe she shouldn't have died. Just run right, away. Yeah. But she come back. You know? It's annoying when she comes back as like her spirit or her ghost, ghost talking to her all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Didn't she get killed already? <laughs> no, she like, the, that's that check. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, get oh, that money. Okay. <laughs> oh, ghost is dreaming again, huh? Okay. 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 Oh. Stuck on that okay. girl. I'm, I'm, I'm back on the scene. <laughs> so you saying that you're going to start probably writing, producing, and do, yeah, doing, doing I, more. I've stuff. already started that's actively dope. doing that. Absolutely. I, I've got some stories um actually two of the stories take place in chicago um hopefully once i've secured all the rights and everything like that i'll come back on the show tell you all about them i heard um, that, bro. it's gonna be it's gonna be great hey man there might would you be, go back to the stage i would love to go back to the stage in that's fact, a whole I, different challenge it's, huh? yeah. it's the, the stage is it's a beautiful thing you know it's so wonderfully interactive and that people that don't go to theater don't realize it as much but it's it is it's the most transcendent of all the visual doing arts, theater you know? does that help you even more so when you say oh you know what I, I got one scene and I can go over it and they're camera blocking and they're doing this is does doing theater help you for not that that film or tv is easier but it's like man I, I was one take Jake and we were live and this you know this is a little bit easier for me to me I think that theater helps in a lot of ways because the show always must go on mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes the magic is the thing that is the untangible and when you're prepared to just act even if something messes up during the scene it's you know serendipity works mm -hmm. then and that's there that's that's ancient man have that's you had alchemy. that moment mm -hmm. absolutely where have you had one that was just like oh my god that was crazy tonight well part of one of the, those was is there was a scene where um tasha is talking to tommy about lakeisha was it you and lakeisha are you hooking up with lakeisha mm -hmm. and i'm drinking this orange juice right well part of that stemmed from i kept messing up the lines where i wasn't answering her back and i was just like what if i don't answer tasha at all but i just keep drinking this orange <laughs> juice and i just kind of go like this <laughs> leaving it up <laughs> they give you that freedom and and well not always right, right. um <laughs> I, I i think that i have i have a little bit of luxury because i earned it at yeah. there at certain times um i i because i always respected the writers and their words so they know that it was anything that i would ever suggest would only be in the best interest and that i was never stuck on anything if i ever said mm -hmm. how about this and they were like no i'd be like okay, okay. well let's right let's, uh, uh, so when, when, when you did fight mm -hmm. for something or when you did bring something it, it wasn't like oh there go joseph again so when you did it was like okay he must be passionate about this or he, or, or, this. or or that idea may be valid um mm -hmm. our co-showrunner gary lennon um and courtney as well um are, are really collaborative for the best idea and, and they're and just it's a it's a great to work with people like that so it wasn't always and um mm -hmm. i always just love when people are if i was like hey this when somebody would be like no because right this and i'm like all right cool this. now let me tell you with with the tv show stars i mean on, on stars power on stars you guys brought a lot of people to stars you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That like people, and no disrespect, but people weren't checking for stars. Oh. Sometimes it came in your package. No. The network, you, the now, network barely existed. It was like it was uh -huh. it was others. This this show put stars on the map. Very it much did. so. Very Absolutely. much so. You you saw people like man calling. Do I have it? Mm -hmm. How do I get? You know. And then you know. And then there's other times you probably can't even name other shows 
that's on stars because y'all really brought an audience there and it, and it is a phenomenon bro well it's also created new opportunities for new shows like vida that's also yeah, on stars man. because that's the only reason why i go on stars now is power that which got me on it and now vida yep. and i think it's amazing and i'm really like excited to see what else happens with that network but you know what it what showed me too joseph mm-hmm. is that it showed me that you could build other platforms, mm-hmm. another network, other platforms, because somebody probably would have said, oh, yeah, such and such on stars. You're like, stars. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. It makes me proud to be, you know, employed by that network that doesn't isn't striving for uh, diversification because it's like, OK, we got to put the black people in here. Oh, we got to put some Latin people in right. here it's because that's America. Mm-hmm. This is truth. And that's why Stars does it, because this reflects us as America, the America that I know, mm-hmm. the America that I want to see, that I want to see reflected. I want to see a true representation of New York exactly. City. And I got to see a true representation of New York City, and I get to see a true representation of Los Angeles mm-hmm. and many yeah. other areas. In fact, they have a ton of other shows coming out that actually shows the world as it is without, it doesn't feel so forced. Sometimes you see diversification to me that feels forced. Yep. And mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel forced on the network, and I'm, I'm like the, it's I'm a proud checklist. Yeah, like, yes. All right, okay, yes. We got this. We got this. Well, you see it from the rest of the networks that are trying to follow. Oh, step yeah. of you know to bring diversity to the screens. Would but agree with that. If you challenges. weren't on Power, would you watch Power? Yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I like it because it's The Wire was certainly one of my favorite shows of all time, and I I was so grateful to work even in a small small capacity with Dominic Lombardozzi, who I think is. One of the absolute greatest New York actors, one of the greatest. Amer- I love. I th- just. I watch everything Dominic Lombardozzi is in, without a doubt. He was just amazing in The Irishman. It's mm-hmm. fat Tony Salerno. I mean, even with all the the prosthetics, mm-hmm. he he acted like an old man. He was fantastic. Anyway, that said, The Wire was just. The Wire is a re is is a dramatic representation of reality. Mm-hmm. Power is a dramatic representation of a realistic fantasy is how I would describe it. So uh, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, you know, ghosts co- showing up out of the shadows just in the nick of time to shoot four Koreans in a car with two guns <laughs> right. from either side. It's, it's slightly. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Exaggerated. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, I get it because that's satisfying to an audience. And so um, it's fun. So I would definitely right. watch Power. Plus, I think the writing is great and fun and there's great twists and I, and I think that uh, the characters are invested so you get to see yourself. And it's definitely been a learning experience for you as well. Huh? That's absolutely. Yeah, you take that and continue to run with it, man. Anything before we bounce? Yes. Go ahead. Tommy says that we all do crazy things or crazy shit for the people that we love. love. Mm-hmm. What is the craziest thing you've ever done for someone you love? Oh, my gosh. I mean, one of them was like chasing my girlfriend to her apartment after I you know, kicked a guy in the subway in the face that was, you know, that I thought touched her. And she was just like, this is over with. She got off at the next stop and I like stayed on the stop. And then I jumped up, got in a cab, was going like it's just it was like, oh, it's traffic. Let me get out here and run because I wanted to beat her to her apartment because I knew she once she was in the door, she's going to be like, all right, there's some crazy dude at my door. And so, I mean, that was something I like, beat her to the apartment. I'm just like, hey. Just don't freak out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what can we do to save this? That was one crazy thing for So love. you kicked yeah. the guy in the face on the subway? I said, if you make a move, I'm going to kick all the teeth out of your rotten mouth. Ooh. That was one thing. Right. What else? Hold move. on. Wait. Let's not, let's not get, get past this. So somewhere yeah. someone's watching uh, Power, and they're saying, hey, that's the guy. Remember when I told you I got beat up on the subway? <laughs> Tommy did it. Tommy they're like, hey, did it. that's him. <laughs> There's a, there is a, the funniest thing about that. I was talking to my cousin. There was this one event that we were graffiti writers our whole life, me oh. and my cousin, Peter Renault, um, in Chicago. And, uh, there was this, uh, meeting, this, this meeting of two crews. So we had two, our, our two crews were all together and we're kind of like, we're talking it and, you know, we're getting old and we're passing it down. I mean, we're getting real old. We're in our like, <laughs> early thirties by this point. <laughs> and like, we're passing it down to like guys in their, or, you know, early twenties to like run the crews and all this and all that. And it's mostly, uh, uh, people of color and me and my super white cousin he always called it the urban curse blonde hair and blue eyes mm. and uh there was this guy he had just gotten out of prison and he was all you know they we're passing it on to this guy well he wrote one of the same names that my boy wrote who Uh-oh. was in the service uh and i was just like i don't like that at all like who the fuck's this guy again and uh anyway he's talking like this and and i was you know trying to tell him something long story short 
I, I was talking to him and he, he was basically like, who, who, who's this guy? Like, you know, fuck this white boy, like blah, 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 blah. And my one bo- guy who ran the crew, who's hand, handing it down, he's just like, hey, you don't want to mess with Joe. Like, Joe's a boxer. He goes, I don't care. He's champion of the world. And, uh, and I was just like, look, and he kept calling me a bitch. And I said, look, oh, no. you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. This isn't a gang. I don't care what you're talking about, about bringing stuff to the crew. This is about, uh, this is about seniority. This is a seniority thing. That's how, that's how this click works. So just realize, he's just like, it's like, bitch, it's like you used to tie my shoes in prison. So I punched him in the throat, and he, his breath was gone, and I just kept poke, poking him in the mouth. I said, what are you going to do? Because I was, you know, ready for, like, hey. And, every, of course, everybody gave me respect on the crew because I had been, I was an old head. So they all backed up, and they're just like, all right, so what are you going to do? And this guy was just like, damn. Boom, he booked. Yeah, he was like, damn, my words Amazing. didn't win this. Yeah. <laughs> you can have my spray can. And, <laughs> and, 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 and uh <laughs> But he was a gangbanger too. I mean, that's how things work in yeah. Chicago. You have a lot of different gangs that actually sometimes guys on opposite gangs are in the same graffiti crew. It's very mm-hmm. bizarre. We'll talk about that at a different yeah. show. <laughs> um, but you know that, right? That's this is probably one well, of your TV shows you're creating too. Like. I, man, I should. So anyway, I, I was talking to my cousin. And you're just like, you know that he, this guy is watching Power and just being like, no, that guy's bad. That guy's tough. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, man. <laughs> wow. This white boy is just <laughs> like this, man. <laughs> That's why it's so easy. He ain't acting. I believe so no, easy to play Tommy's neck. Like yeah, man, that dude <laughs> right there. <laughs> <man. laughs> Tommy motherfucker. did it to me. <laughs> that motherfucker crazy, He's man. a natural. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, everybody else who kicked my ass was like, he ain't that tough. <laughs> Oh, exactly. I whooped, I whooped yeah. Tommy I up. I laid him out. Hey, man, as soon as they say cut, you full of shit. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they say yeah. cut. Man, thank you for coming yeah. to Tuesday. It's always a pleasure. We got to do guys. it again, bro. Wow. We got to do it again. What you doing tomorrow? <laughs> I need the ratings. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll be back. Right, All right. Wow. All right, part two of our interview, ladies and gentlemen, where he talk about the actual graffiti uh, team. And, no, no, what's up, Luke? I want to ask one question before he leaves. Yeah. How much fake cocaine do you think you've snorted? Oh my all god, six I have so much B12 and whatever other ginseng <laughs> complex up my nose. A, a lot. And, and that's, that's okay to it, do? It I think it, there's a certain amount B12 like there was the, cool. the the one scene where you know I'm down and I'm with my mom and I'm just like Yeah. Like, so, uh-huh. I did that scene several house. times and there's a lot and it gets you pretty vibed up. Like I don't know if there's caffeine in there Your or something. Eyes. I was like yeah. I was like, I mean, that's some, some of the stuff when you do see my eyes are so I dilated. It. It's I'm like, I, there was no drops in my eyes. That was just like, wow. I'm Dude, not you acting. Think was, with the success of that of show, these. that they would give y'all real cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you got this man doing oh, sin and B12. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell <laughs> Curtis <laughs> to put some real cocaine <laughs> on there. <laughs> that's a successful show. <laughs> Got this That's man. Like the real work. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my that gosh, crazy. man. I thought that they were really taking mm. care of you over there. It's obvious <laughs> that they're not. Do you follow 50 on Instagram? Of course. Do you enjoy 50 Cent on Instagram? I do. Sometimes he makes me nervous because I'm a much nicer guy, it seems like, I guess, at times. Where I'm just like, <laughs> oh, that's man. not nothing. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you do that? And then, and then the whole thing with French made me so nervous because it, that, that mm. back and forth kind of got to a head where I was yeah. like, hey, take it easy. But, I, but uh, Fifth, Fifth is a marketing genius. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he has utilized social media and and utilized his platform mm-hmm. unlike almost anybody I've ever known. And if it was not for Fifty Cent, the grassroots um, uh, movement that made Power successful would not have existed. So, what yeah, about when he point. was going at? Was it Notori? Was Notori, it Notori? Yeah, yeah. yeah when when, when you saw that, like it was was that a little uncomfortable? I I still don't. I'm not exactly positive okay. what went down. I mean, that that could have been bringing attention to the last mm-hmm. episodes of Power. There could have been something there. Oftentimes with Fifth, he has maybe closed talks with people, uh, and there's a, a separate agenda. I know that he appreciates uh, Naturi on the show, and Naturi. I know that they're friends and friendly. So I think things could have got lost in translation sometimes. Mm. Maybe he didn't okay stuff with her and say right. like it's just like this is a joke right. and it's a joke for like this. So maybe he didn't clear that first. Right. But I do know that he respects her greatly. So mm. Mm. you've been in the industry for a very long time, and obviously just living life. Yeah. Looking back through everything you've been through, what advice would you give your younger self? I would say literally seven years ago when you lived for a month during pilot season in your friend's garage with no plumbing <sighs> in Hollywood. Don't, don't do that. Just don't, don't do that. That's not, you're better than that, man. And my friend who let me live in his garage is like, I, I have not stopped trying to get that guy work since I've been able to work. Just thinking, uh-huh. 
This guy, this guy had nothing, and he gave it to wow. me. Wow! Wow! So I always try to have this this man's back. You know, that's friend. beautiful that you recognize it because this is my yeah. buddy Jose. We've been together for years. I never tell him how instrumental he is to me. You know what I'm saying? I just <laughs> have, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 yeah, the days when I didn't have a car, uh, he gave me a ride. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? The, the days when I was hungry, he fed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Jose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep it cool, yeah. Keep it cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes you just don't want to give them that power. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Good. Yeah, so no. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so the. So All right, Matthew. <laughs> next time uh, you're not getting a call. Yeah. And you know what? And even with Matthew, you got to know how to switch that oh, around. Man. You stayed in his garage, right? Mm -hmm. If he was a friend, he would have let you come in the house. That's right. He didn't have a house. Damn that Matthew. Oh, he had his garage. He was living in the garage. That bastard. With me. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And we would take turns because there was only enough room for a couch and the floor. So right. he had like a mat, like a because a, a, he was a stunt guy doing stunt stuff. So he had like a stunt mat that he would sleep on 90% of the time. Damn. What a friend. And, yeah. Damn. What a friend. Man, and he we would have bring you him sleep on it the on other the, times. On the couch. What yeah, friend I, is that? I know. <laughs> you know what the I'm two times in the month I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. knowing that you was going to blow up. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Just if gotta, that's what I friends just, are for. I just you know what I'm saying? Out. And he pulling you down. He living in the garage. He pulling you down. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's, it, it was, it's just amazing that there's some people are that kind. And not knowing what was around the corner for you. Or not saying this is an investment and one day he's going to like, nah. A real friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real friend, bro. Yeah, I still haven't done enough for him, but I'm, I'm working on it, Matthew. Well, that's your problem. All righty, man. Just <laughs> support in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. He can want me to write up a check. Yeah. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> can you make that out to Matthew Big, please? Can you make it out? I'm not, I'm not writing Matthew in check. I'm talking about this. Call you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh, Big, what happened to your big clothes that you said? You know, he's uh, gaining a little weight. You know what I'm saying? But thank you for coming oh, into the neighborhood, man. Thank you, my Always brother. a pleasure to have you Always in here. I know that this is your... Second time coming in, and yeah. I know you questioned the first time when you left, like, why did I do that show yeah. again? <laughs> and then when you actually saw me in the hall, but you was like, oh my God, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might here. as well. All right, but thank you. Thank my you. Pleasure. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> and if, if you want to tell us anything about power before no, you go ahead, leak it. I will tell you that, um, that uh, hashtag power never ends. Power never mm -hmm. ends. I know it. There it is right there, man. Well, thank yeah. you for coming into the yeah, neighborhood, big boy neighborhood. Boy.